Today we'll discuss about the female urethra. Now, the female urethra is 4 cm long and 6 mm in diameter. It is beginning at the internal urethral orifice of the bladder, approximately opposite middle of the pubis symphysis over here, which is running anterior inferiorly behind the symphysis pubis embedded in the anterior wall of the vagina. Now, the, fe the female urethra crosses the perineal membrane. You can see this is the urethral opening in the perineal membrane and ends as external urethral orifice as an anterior posterior slit with rather prominent margins situated directly anterior to the opening of the vagina 2.5 cm behind the glans clitoridis. Except during the passage of the urine, the anterior and posterior walls of the urethral canal possess a ridge which is termed as the urethral crest. Many small mucous urethral glands and minute pit-like glands or recesses or lacunas open into the urethra. On each side, near the lower end of the urethra, a number of these glands are grouped and open into a duct. They are called the paraurethral glands. Each paraurethral gland, each paraurethral duct runs down in the submucous tissue and ends in a small aperture on the lateral margins of the external urethral orifice. Now, the superior vesicle and the vaginal arteries are supplying the female urethra, urethra and it is similar to that of the male urethra, the arterial and the venous supply, venous plexus around the urethra, drain into the vesicle plexus, drain into the internal pudendal vein and finally the internal iliac vein. Lymphatic drainage, it is draining into the internal and the external iliac nodes. Coming to the innervation, again it is similar to that of the males. The parasympathetic preganglionic fibers from the second to fourth sacral segment of the spinal cord running through the pelvic splanchnic nerves and synapsing in the vesicle venous plexus, the postganglionic fibers reach the smooth muscle cells. The somatic fibers from the same segments as 2 to 4 reach the striated muscles through the pelvic splanchnic nerves and do not synapse in the vesicle plexus. This is the vesicle plexus near the bladder. The sensory fibers in pelvic splanchnic nerves reach to second to fourth sacral segments of the spinal cord. The postganglionic sympathetic fibers arise from plexus around the vaginal arteries. Now, very important is the walls of the urethra. Now, the wall has an outer muscular coat and an inner mucosa that is lining the lumen and is continuous with that of the urinary bladder. The muscle coat, outer sheath of striated muscle, the external urethral sphincter or the distal sphincter mechanism together with the smooth muscle. Right. The female urethral, external urethral sphincter, right, it is in an anatomically separate from the adjacent periurethral striated muscle of the anterior pelvic floor, that is the puborethralis part of the levator ani muscle. Now, the sphincter is forming a sleeve which is thickest anteriorly in the middle one third of the urethra and relatively deficient posterior. The striated muscles extend into the anterior wall of both the proximal and the distal part of urethra 
but is deficient posteriorly. Now, the muscles forming the external urethral sphincter are all small diameter slow twitch fibers and the smooth muscle coat that is the inner extending throughout the length of the urethra. A few circularly arranged muscle fibers occurring in the outer aspect of the non-striated muscle layer which are oblique or longitudinally oriented and these intermingle with the striated muscle fibers forming the inner parts of the external urethral sphincter. Proximally, the urethral smooth muscle cell extend as far as the neck of the bladder where it is replaced by detrusor smooth muscle cells. But this region is different in females as it lacks the well-defined circular smooth muscle component compared to the comparable to the preprostatic sphincter of the male. Now women do not possess an internal urethral sphincter. Distally, the urethral smooth muscle cells terminate in the subcutaneous adipose tissue around the external urethral meatus. Smooth muscle cells of the female urethra receive an extensive presumptive cholinergic nerve supply but a few non-adrenergic fibers. In the absence of an anatomical sphincter, competence of a female bladder neck and the proximal urethra unlikely to be totally dependent on smooth muscle activity and is probably related to supports provided by ligamentous structures which surround them. Now, the longitudinal orientation and innervation of the muscle is suggestive that the urethral smooth muscle cells in the female is active during micturation and serves to shorten and widen the urethral lumen. Now, just an overview of what micturation actually is and how it occurs. Initially, the bladder is filling without much rise in the intravesical pressure and this is due to the adjustment of the bladder tone. Then, when the quantity of the urine exceeds 220 cc, the intravesical pressure rises and this stimulates the sensory nerves and produces a desire to micturate. If this is neglected, rhythmic reflex contractions of the detrusor muscles start, which become more and more powerful as the quantity of the urine increases. Now, this is giving a feeling of fullness of the bladder, which may later on be painful. The voluntary holding of urine is due to contraction of the sphincter urethrae and of the perineal muscles with coincident inhibition of the detrusor muscles. Now, micturation is initiated by the following successive events. First, there is relaxation of the perineal muscles except the distal urethral sphincter and contraction of the abdominal muscles. This is followed by firm contraction of the detrusor and relaxation of the proximal urethral sphincter mechanism. Then lastly, the distal urethral sphincter mechanism relaxes and the flow of the urine begins. The bladder is emptied by the contraction of the detrusor muscles. Emptying is assisted by the contraction of abdominal muscles. When urination is complete, the detrusor muscle relaxes and the proximal urethral sphincter mechanism contracts. And finally, the distal urethral sphincter mechanism contracts. In the male, the last drops of urine are expelled from the bulbar portion of the urethra by contraction of the bulbospongiosis. Now, coming to the clinical anatomy, what is catheterization of the bladder okay, in the patient unable to pass urine leading to retention of the urine? In such cases, a rubber tube is inserted and passed through the bladder through the urethra and while passing the bladder 
one has to remember the normal curvatures of the urethra. There could also be a rupture of urethra, which is commonly seen in uh, the fracture of the pubis, the pelvis, causing extravasion of urine. Now, the rupture of the penile urethra leads to collection of the urine in the superficial perineal space. We have done this before. Infection of the urethra is called urethritis, right? There could also be a constriction of the urethra following infection. Right. And symptoms include the urethral discharge, itching, pain and swollen lip wounds. Now, this condition is called the epispediasis, right? In which the urethra is opening on the dorsum of the penis. This condition is associated with ectopia vesicae, you can see, and absence of infra-umbilical part of the anterior abdominal wall. Okay, the anterior abdominal wall is absent over here. Hypospedias is a common anomaly in which the urethra opens on the undersurface of the penis or in the perineum. Right? Okay. So that's all about the female urethra. Thank you.